The man who passes the sentence should swing the sword. If you think this has a happy ending, you haven't been paying attention. What's up Game of Thrones fans and welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk about the Season 8 Episode 1 script that is leaked online. However, I'm not familiar with the website that I found the script on, so by no means do I claim this to be the real script. It may be, or it could possibly just be fan fiction. I'm not sure at this point. I know that the script writing is finished for Season 8, and filming is set to begin next month, so it is possible this could be real. So with all that being said, let's get started. Scene 1 Aftermath of the Night King's attack on the East Watch by the Sea Tormund and Gendry are able to flee the scene. Undead Viserion sets crows afire. Beric Dondarrion stays behind to fight the White Walkers and dies off screen. Ed is stabbed to death by the White Walkers. Tormund and Gendry ride for Winterfell, while the Burning Castle Black is in the background. Daenerys, Jon, Tyrion, Davos, Jorah, Brienne, Podrick, the Hound, Masande, Varys, and Theon arrive in Winterfell. Davos remarks that it has gotten much colder and darker since he left with Jon. John and Arya are first reunited. Daenerys meets Sansa, and Sansa asks whether she and John are in love now. Daenerys doesn't give a proper response to that. Sansa doesn't seem too pleased with John returning to Winterfell in Daenerys' presence. John notices and chats with her. She mentions Littlefinger's death and how he has always betrayed them. She says it is plain stupid to work together with Cersei Lannister. The Hound and Arya also have a conversation with each other. Arya tells the Hound she didn't regret to leave him behind without having him killed off. The Hound answers that Arya should have had him killed off right there, especially with the things that he has seen beyond the wall. Euron Greyjoy arrives back at King's Landing with the Golden Company and meets up with Cersei Lannister and the commanders of the Golden Company in the throne room. Cersei thanks Euron for having the cell swords shipped to King's Landing. Cersei orders the commander-in-chief to take Storm's End and to have the army gathered in the fortress. Robert Baratheon once told her that the fortress has stood for many centuries, and she's sure it will keep standing during the long night as well. Since there's no Baratheon holding the castle any longer, it wouldn't be too difficult to just take it themselves. They'll need to protect themselves during the Great War. Later that night, Euron Greyjoy is about to have sex with Cersei Lannister. Euron jokes that she won't miss her brother after she finds out what he can give her. Cersei's face says enough. She isn't too pleased with Euron in her bed. Possible nudity to be seen here. The following morning, Euron leaves with his ship, the Silence, to ferry the cell swords to Storm's End to take the fortress. After he comes back, he tells Cersei he wants to be her king. Inside the Silence, Euron has a conversation with Yara Greyjoy about Queen Cersei. Yara point blank tells him that she knows he is not interested in being Queen Cersei's pet husband at all. Euron laughs and tells her his good friends from Bravos will take care of that problem soon enough. Daenerys, Jon, Sansa, Tyrion, Davos, Masande, Sam, Varys, and the Northern Lords and the Knights of the Vale gather in the Great Hall for Winterfell. Sweet Robin and Jan Royce are also present in the scene. Sam reunites with Jon, and the two share a hug. Jon tells Sam he's glad to have him back. The Northern Lords aren't too pleased to accept Daenerys as their queen. Daenerys defends herself very well, but she doesn't get the support from the North just yet. Lyanna Mormont tells Daenerys Targaryen that she will never call her Your Grace, because she only knows one king, and that's Jon Snow, the King of the North. Tyrion smiles and mentions that she's a ferocious girl, on which Jorah replies the Mormons don't sit back for anything. Jon tells them there's no time to argue with each other, and brings up that there hasn't been word of the Lannister army yet. Sansa responds that she warned them not to trust Cersei Lannister. Tyrion mentions that they can trust his brother Jaime, but Daenerys doesn't seem to agree on this. The group discusses how they will defend the North against the Night King's army. Jon Snow tells Robin it is wise to bring the Eyrie into the fold, and lure the Night King into there. Robin doesn't really seem to care and accepts Jon's proposal. After meeting, Daenerys tells Jon that the Northerns really are stubborn and small-minded people. Theon Greyjoy visits the Godswood of Winterfell and meets with Bran. He immediately apologizes to Bran for everything he has done against the House Stark, but Bran tells him there's no need for that. He knows that Theon has redeemed himself by saving his sister Sansa. He has seen how much she has suffered at the hands of Ramsay Bolton. Theon asks him how he knows all of this, but Bran doesn't respond. Arya and Brienne are training, and Jon is impressed by his sister's fighting skills. Arya mentions that she has never forgotten to stick her enemies with the pointy end. He asks Arya why she didn't join the meeting in the Great Hall of Winterfell. Arya answers that Sansa is way better at those things than she is. In Volantis, Lady Melisandre enters the Red Temple. She is again welcomed by Kinvara. Melisandre tells Kinvara that she has played her part in the Great War to come 
She has united ice and fire. She has served King John Snow, the prince who was promised, and brought him back to life. Kinvara tells Melisandre that she served with their god well on that part, but she also made a lot of mistakes where she needs to pay for it. Kinvara tells Melisandre that their god demands one more sacrifice of Melisandre, which requires her to return to the north. Melisandre answers that she isn't allowed to enter the north. Kinvara smiles and answers Melisandre that she could benefit from her punishment then. We see Jaime Lannister at an inn where he meets up with Bronn. Jaime surprised to see Bronn, asks him why he followed him. Bronn answers that there's nothing left for him in that stinking city, and he's up for some adventure of the north. Jaime is glad to have Bronn by his side. Bronn asks Jamie why he left the woman he loves the most, but Jamie doesn't fully respond to this question. He then asks what he's planning to do now he's left the King's Landing. Jamie tells Bronn he's on his way to River Run to bring the garrison Lannister army back to the fold. Bronn asks him why he would give up the castle he has been occupying. Jamie answers what's the purpose that we would have. What does he gain with that? For all he cares, Edmure can have River Run back. Tormund and Gendry arrive at Winterfell. Jon Snow asks Sansa why Bran didn't take the time to join the meeting in the Great Hall and didn't even come to speak to him. Sansa tells Jon Bran has changed a lot and calls himself the Three-Eyed Raven now. She tells him not to expect much of a conversation with him. Samuel comes in between and tells Jon there's something he and Bran urgently need to tell him. Bran first sees Jon in the Godswood when he's looking into the past. Jon mentions that he has seen and encountered a warg beyond the wall. Sam responds that Bran is much more than a warg, he's a green seer. The two inform Jon Snow about his parentage, which Don doesn't seem to believe at first sight. Bran tells Jon he knows everything about him. He saw him beyond the wall, surrounded by the free folk, he saw him fighting at the hard home against the Night King, and he saw how he was stabbed to death by his own men. Jon can't really believe he's a Targaryen. Sam mentions that he's the one with the right claim on the Iron Throne, not Daenerys Targaryen, but Jon, Aegon Targaryen. 